Alright, so we're here with Jay and he's going to tell us a story about um, the Ouija board. Or your Ouija board experience. You know, it's really weird because the more people I've been talking to lately, uh, and if I mention, because uh, I've been dealing with so many people in the paranormal field and people who are interested in that sort of thing, if I say anything about a Ouija board, everybody just kind of, I don't know what the deal is. It's like that one touchy subject. Yeah, I was about 14 years old and I was invited over to someone's house to play with a Ouija board. And I remember thinking this is a, it's fake, it's set up, people are moving it, even if um, you are unconsciously moving it yourself. So I didn't believe it, um, but I wanted to go anyway. I was going to check it out. It was a party. Who's going to pass up a party? We got there, and there was probably about, I don't know, six, seven of us there. Uh, I went into this very much a non-believer. It was all a psychological process. And I didn't really know why I decided, yeah, I'll, I'll play it. Because I watched him, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe for about a half hour. I don't really recall if they were getting responses right from the get-go. But I decided, you know what, I'll, I'll play along with it and I'll see what happens. Find out what this Ouija board thing's about. We started playing. Everybody, uh, again, there were about six of us that are, had our hand on the, the planchette. And... It started out relatively slow, and it would increase over time, the, the answers and the activity. And we started playing and, and talking to this one guy who was, uh, words were very broken, uh, responses were kind of odd. And to me, this was all proof that, you know, someone here is pushing it, and I'm watching everyone's hand more than I'm focusing on what's going on. Uh, with the board itself or the type of questions we were asking. Someone had asked the question or a question and its response was why you X and we all kind of sat there for a second kind of kind of asking why you X what, what does that mean and somebody said why you ask and it went to yes. We all kind of sat there and one of them uh, one of the players said well fuck you why you ask and the planchette started to spin uh, or, or form a circular pattern, always uh, aiming north, so to speak, the, the pointer aiming north, and it would move in this circular pattern around the board, and it was going kind of slowly at first, and it started to pick up speed faster and faster, and I was very focused on everyone's hands at that point because uh, I wanted to see who I thought might be moving it, but at the same time I was aware that at one point or another everyone's hand had come off the planchette and had to put their hand and kind of catch it again. So as it got faster and faster and faster and it darted straight up to the top of the board and then straight down. And the second the planchette left the board, there was a light behind us, there was a light in the hallway and there was a light in the kitchen and they blew their circuit. Uh, the lights just went out. There was a light farther back in the hallway that was still on and there was a light somewhere else. So it's not like the whole house just blew their entire circuits. There were individual circuits that, that blew, and it was an instant terrifying feeling. Now, I'm sure that was the reaction to what had happened. I, want, I keep wanting to say there was a parrot behind us, and it kind of squawked at the same time, whether that parrot was squawking because we were freaking out or whether there was, uh, you know, it was aware of something going on. But what's always fascinated me and made the most, uh, uh, or the biggest impression as we played that is the timing of it was so perfect. Because as I, literally the second that planchette left the board, boom, the circuits just blew. We all kind of sat there in amazement for a while trying to gather our senses and determine what had actually had happened. But we had to go out into the backyard and there was a circuit breaker and we it had a little luggage lock on it. So we literally had to break it off, open it up and turn the circuits back on. From that point on, I was sold. I think it was the next day we went out and bought my Ouija board because I decided, hey, that was... What I had experienced was something I couldn't explain. And from that point on, I was ready to investigate and, and get my own answers. This all actually leads into my second experience with a Ouija board that kind of shook me. And I don't really know how to explain uh, what had happened with this one, but we'd been playing for about three or four months. I'd had a couple other friends that actually weren't playing that night with us. We'd gotten to the point where uh, we were communicating on, a, on kind of a regular basis with uh, two or three individuals. And what we would do is, as we played, 
uh, again, when we started out, nothing much was happening. Uh, in fact, it, for, I don't know, the first two, three, four times we actually played it, uh, you know, one of my friends was like, this is dumb. So, you know, like it's supposed to work automatically. There's no on switch. So as we started to communicate more and more, we started getting more responses. The responses would be stronger. They'd come quicker. But when we were done talking with someone, if it was someone we enjoyed talking with, we'd say, hey, can you give us a sign so that we can uh, contact you again, almost like a calling card, what's your symbol? And they would form a pattern on the board. Now, when we would return to play uh, in the future, if we wanted to talk to that person, we would uh, think about that person and form the pattern, keep repeating the pattern until uh, we felt like we were getting a response from that person. So we'd hit a pattern, ask a few questions, hit the pattern again, ask a few questions, uh, until all of a sudden it would start responding. There was one girl that we would always talk to. Now here's another interesting thing is, uh, it seemed like every time we played and the people we talked to, you know, I don't know why we ask these damn questions when you play this freaking uh, thing, but I'd always ask, you know, where are you? Inevitably, it was always pointing next to me or to the side of me or behind me. And for a while there, I kind of assumed maybe I'm subconsciously doing a lot of this, manipulating it myself. I don't know. Maybe I'm freaking weird. <laughs> um, so anyway, there was uh, a couple people we always talked to. One of them was uh, a young girl. I don't recall ages or anything like that. Um, and then there was another guy who uh, was always giving us a hard time. Uh, and yeah, we'd talk to a couple people that always say things like, I want you to be with me forever. And yeah, that's when I got kind of creeped oh. out. Uh, in fact, there was one we talked to on a regular basis that would always say, I am going to get you. I, you you'll see. Okay. And man, those were the eeriest feelings ever. We had these regular people that we would talk to, spirits, entities, whatever they might be. One night I was talking to uh, one of the guys that we, uh, a male, that we talked to on a regular basis. And he was always kind of uh, feisty and uh, he wasn't threatening. But uh, I asked, and by this point, uh, in doing some of my readings and talking with others about Ouija boards, it became very apparent that a lot of times these entities lie. They lie to you. There's no way for you to prove exactly who you're communicating with, which uh, allows uh, a few partic particular spirits to be uh, uh, deceiving in any way they possibly can. In talking to this once, uh, one guy I asked, have you ever gone by any other name? And it said yes. And I said, okay, well, what name had you gone by? And it had gone to S and it had gone to A. And as it was moving to R, I completely burst into tears. And it wasn't, I don't even know how to describe it. It wasn't, and I, I want to say I was, I was in tears for maybe a good two minutes. It felt like I was in tears for 10 minutes, you know. Uh, uh, and the entire time I was crying, it was almost like a subconscious fear. Why the heck am I crying? What is going on? I didn't have the feeling of sadness, of fear. It was confusion. What is going on with me right now? Why is this happening? Almost as if I was incapable of controlling it. Uh, well, I felt at the time that I couldn't control it. I didn't know why. And then all of a sudden it stopped. Now in that point, uh, while I burst into tears, the friends I was working with had actually you know, gone to goodbye to say, hey, we're done. And when I stopped crying, it was all of a sudden, whoa, what just happened to me? What's going on? Now, to relate back to another person we were communicating with on the board at that time, the young girl, she went by the name Sarah. So Sarah, and uh, this plays into my theories that I'll get to in the end, but we actually, after, I don't know, half hour to an hour of discussing and talking and trying to figure out what had happened to me, we decided to get back on and see what we could find out. The first person we contacted was this guy. Asked a few questions. He said he had gone by the name Sarah, the young girl, many times. And I said, I don't understand. Uh, and I still to this day don't know if every time we were talking with Sarah, if it was actually the same person or if this person had taken the opportunity to um, disguise himself on specific occasions, I don't know. 
But I asked them, I said, why, why did that happen to me? Why did I cry? They had said, uh, because this, you felt like she was the little sister you never had. At that point, we kind of said, okay, you know what, we're done with you. This is ridiculous. I was pretty taken back that I could be emotionally taken over like that. So I said, you know what, I'm done. I don't want to play this anymore. That was actually the last time I'd, I'd played it. It wasn't until I was 18 that I met my birth father. My mother and father had divorced before I was a year old. And my stepfather uh, adopted me when I was six years old. So I took his name and, and he's been my father. But at 18, I met my birth father and I met my two half sisters, uh, Hillary and Sarah. And it literally wasn't until the past, within the last five years that I realized, holy cow, uh, that's quite intriguing. Maybe it's just chance. I don't know, but it's, Interesting. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to get to my disclaimer part, and this is very important, so I hope you hung out for the whole talk. But um, I am not naive to believe that anything we were communicating with was a spirit, was uh, an entity, was something in the great beyond. At the same time, I think it's important to note that while Ouija boards are uh, tools of paranormal research, I don't view them any different than you would a K2 meter, a Mel meter, a recording device, anything like that. Um, you hear jokes all the time, uh, Parker Brothers makes uh, Ouija boards. Now when I was younger I did a lot of research and found that Ouija boards have been used for thousands of years. Uh, the Greeks uh, had devices similar but that would take up a whole room and they, they would have someone on a tower that would sit and record uh, responses to things they were asking. So while it doesn't really matter who makes the game, where it's made of, you can make your own board if you wanted to, using your own materials to make planchettes and, and things like that. You don't even have to have it in a specific pattern, as long as it provides all of the letters and numbers and, and uh, entering and exiting mechanisms required to protect yourself or communicate. What's important that I strongly believe is that while a Ouija board is nothing more than just a simple tool to communicate with something that is possibly beyond, uh, keyword possibly, we don't know, I'm smarter than this now, um, is that the reason I see it as a dangerous tool is it's dangerous uh, in the sense that this is a tool rather than a K2 or a recording device, a millimeter, uh, it is a tool that you are subconsciously allowing yourself to be used as a tool to communicate with something beyond. That doesn't necessarily, again, mean you are going to be communicating with something beyond. It also means you are subconsciously allowing your mind to uh, perceive that it is communicating with something beyond. We could be tapping into our own uh, subconscious, which is actually opening up gateways to areas that we didn't even know we had um, retained or pushed to the back of our mind and said, I don't even want to think about this again. It's dangerous in the effect that, now in a spiritual sense, if we are actually able to communicate with something beyond, we have allowed ourselves willingly and subconsciously to use our own individual person as a tool to share with something beyond. That is where I see the danger in this, is that when we put down a K2, a recording device, we expect that tool to take care of itself, record what it sees, and read back the information. Ouija boards, I see, are nothing more, um, or, or are very similar to things such as uh, spirit writing, seances, uh, all of these sort of um, practices that are used to investigate and communicate, you open yourself up to a level that our standard tools cannot. And that's why it is uh, especially important because this also plays, again, not only on a spiritual realm, but on your own sanity, <laughs> that if you are preparing yourself and if you've learned how to protect yourself, if you choose to use yourself as a tool, you understand somewhere that you have the ability to turn it off, um, put the pen down, 
hang up the phone, whatever you want to call it. But that is the important level that people understand there has to be an exit mechanism to relieve, to consciously, subconsciously, whatever, relieve yourself as the tool. And that's where I see the importance of that. Again, I don't necessarily think it's always paranormal. I do believe there's so much psychosis that goes on with uh, your own mind. Uh, I can't remember the specific terms, but you talk about the motor skills with your brain, mm -hmm. the ability to move things in such a way that you physically don't think you're doing anything, but you're... Um, you're, you're expecting you're it to happen so exactly. your body reacts to it. Exactly. I don't know. Uh, in fact, uh, I've been speaking. Uh, everybody has seen, hopefully, the video with Ben so they know who Ben is. Mm -hmm. In fact, you need to get Casey in a video. Mm -hmm. Casey's got some, yeah. some good stories, too. I got some too. videos planned with Ben. I should do some with Casey, too. Yeah, because I know he'd be happy to. But uh, Ben and Casey, in fact, just tonight, we're chatting online. Uh, as I have gone uh, from <laughs> minor to investigator, so to speak, um, I'm always trying to apply some critical thinking to some of the things we're doing. We've been talking about uh, ideas of, of somehow doing a little bit more scientific paranormal research into using Ouija boards. I don't want to reveal any of those yeah. possible experiments we have planned, mostly because I don't know them all yet. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably going to hook an electrode up to my forehead and put me in a haunted location with a Ouija board and say, here, Jay, do something. Yeah. That would be just a great experiment. You'd be like, Aaron Goodwin of Ghost, Ghost yeah. Adventures. That always make him do the worst. That poor guy. Why did they do that to him? He's an Oregon native. Maybe because he has the best reactions. I'm sure that's exactly why they yeah. do it. Would you say, like if someone has an EVP recorder, asking someone questions, would you think that's the same thing as putting your hands on a Ouija board? Like, No. No, because there again you have a tool, the audio recording device, which you have placed somewhere. Right? Even if you're holding it, what you're asking for is communication Into uh, the directly device. to the device that you will then later hear. Mm -hmm. Now, if I said, <laughs> you know, possess my being yeah. so that I can communicate with that device, then you've opened yourself up to a realm, even if you're doing it with your own subconscious. But or if you're asking for it to touch yourself or... Um, yeah. Touch your hair or punch or hit, like, you know, Ghost Adventures do that all the time. Yeah, and see, even that is uh, a very, uh, the type of communication that you're looking uh, to receive is not something that is transmitted through you, it is something that happens to you. Mm -hmm. uh, anytime you use yourself as a transmission device, um, that's where I think you're looking for trouble. And that's the problem with so many people that use Ouija boards, as they aren't. Um, very knowledgeable or haven't researched the possibilities of what could happen, whether it be you doing it to yourself mm -hmm. or the spirit world interacting. Yep, and it can depend on how vulnerable you are in like your personal life. Absolutely. That's what I think. So I think if you're very vulnerable, like if you're going through a really hard time and you're susceptible to maybe something negative, you might get something negative. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I don't know. There's some weird stuff out there. Mm -hmm. I'm getting into all this research stuff, and I'm going yeah. to see what I can find, because you know what? And it is important also, you know, uh, I was talking with Ben and Casey about this, but the importance, and I've said this so many times, what I personally believe is the most uh, important paranormal tool you can have is your own personal experience, but at the same time, it's the most flawed. Um, uh, perceptions can be skewed. Um, uh, you know, uh, people who want to believe can see or uh, believe they're interacting with something that might not possibly be there. But the importance of having so many tools available while researching is that if I experience something personally, you may not be privy to that information, right? You may not feel, you may not hear, you may not see the things I'm seeing. But if there are two to three other devices, and if just one of those additional devices can corroborate an experience that I may have had, then that's some sort of backing that mm -hmm. something, paranormal or not, uh, has triggered a response or you are able to also disprove at the same time. Without more than one level of uh, backup, there's no way to prove or disprove any information we receive. Mm 
-hmm. Have you ever done any Ouija board stuff? Mm -mm. Oh, that's interesting. Never. All this dead stuff, I just kind of assumed, you know, right? and all of your abilities and your ghost yeah. talk. I figured, oh, it's got to be yeah. an easy one for you, huh? Actually, I'm not too fond of the Ouija board. And I don't know if that's just because of how I got brought up, but I don't feel comfortable around, around a Ouija board. And then I actually did a video on my YouTube channel about the Ouija board, kind of asking everyone else's opinion on, like, what their thoughts are on the Ouija board. And most, most of the time, everyone has negative. Yeah. Very rarely does anyone have a good experience out of a Ouija board, but a lot of people have negative experiences or have had bad things happen or something happens that's not a feel-good moment. And I actually shared how now there's this whole style going around of jewelry and clothes and phone cases and everything for the Ouija board. Really? So you can go to like Hot Topic and there's t-shirts and everything in the Ouija board and I can't even do those but it's very popular right now it's very popular i had no idea yeah, yeah. so now uh, let me ask you as someone who has the ability to communicate as far as i'm concerned if you have the ability to see something you're already uh in tune with something in yourself that allows you to be perceptive to spiritual feedback it's like i don't need a ouija board. you don't necessarily need a ouija kind board i am one <laughs> Annie the human Ouija board. <laughs> Ouija board. Oh. <laughs> I never thought of, about that. That's how much of a freak I am. I'm working on my freakiness. <laughs> oh. Well, we'll definitely do a follow-up video someday after we can get some of these Ouija board uh, yeah. um, things going in. And you know what? I'm not surprised. Go ahead and flame the comments with how uh, I'm stupid and don't know anything because you're right. I'm, well, not stupid, but I don't know anything. <laughs> Um, I'm doing uh, my part to research these things as responsible uh, as I can. Um, but you know what? If you have some good feedback or things that I might consider as I'm doing some of this uh, research with Ben and Casey, throw it in there. I'll we'll take it into consideration and see what happens. 